Storytime with me, Mischi. This week on Storytime, we have a very exciting topic. We are learning all about the Wild West. That's right, we are learning all about cowboys and stagecoaches, gold and outlaws. It is going to be a crazy adventure. In the time between 1865 and 1900 in the United States, Thousands of settlers were making their way across the United States to the western half of the country. We were searching for gold. We were searching for a better life. Farmers, ranchers, cowboys, gold miners, families of all kinds were moving to the western half of the United States to look for a better life. Towns and cities in the Wild West weren't really populated at that time. There weren't a lot of people there. There was a lot of native settlers in the area. The whole place was pretty much undiscovered territory. So that when the people moved, their towns and their cities weren't like what we're used to in a town or a city today. And a lot of times the laws didn't get followed. There were outlaws and bad guys, bandits and robbers, and they had to survive the best they could. And that is what made the West wild. So today we are gonna learn all about what life might have been like in this book called, If You Were a Kid in the Wild West. What would your life have been like if you were a child during this time of westward expansion? Maybe you live on the west coast like me. I live in California and that is on the western side of the United States. You might live in Nevada or Oregon or Washington and all of those western states were undiscovered territory. Laws weren't followed. The whole place was wild. So we are going to learn what it must have been like to be a kid during that time. So grab a cozy seat and get ready, because here we go. <laughs> if you were a kid in the Wild West, written by Tracy Baptiste and illustrated by Jason Raish. Here's our table of contents. This is a nonfiction story, so we can find the table of contents that will tell us where different things are in our book. A different way of life. Many people moved to the American West between 1865 and 1900. This was right after the end of the US Civil War. White settlers were seeking their fortune as farmers, ranchers, or gold miners. Former enslaved people wanted to leave the racism of the southern states for all black towns. Chinese people came to work mostly on the Transcontinental Railroad, which connected the two coasts. And Japanese people migrated to California to work on farms. They all met Mexican and Native American people who already lived there. This period of westward expansion is known as the Wild West Era. It is called wild because there were very few towns or cities. The animals there were untamed and laws were rarely followed. Let's set off on our own Wild West adventure and you will see that life today is a lot different than it was in the past. Meet Kate. Kate Smith's family owns a general store in Dodge City, Kansas. Kate is the oldest of six children. Each of them helps at the store. It's a very busy because it's a cattle drive season. That means groups of cowboys are passing through town all the time. The cowboys lead huge numbers of longhorn steers to be shipped on the railroad. There is a lot to do, but Kate wishes she could go to school instead. So Kate's family runs a store, kind of like a grocery store. And she and her siblings have to work at the grocery store instead of go to school like normal kids would do. Meet Nat. After slavery was abolished, Nat Jackson's family thought about leaving the South. But Nat's father found work as a cowboy on a Texas ranch. He earned just as much money as the white cowboys. This is Nat's first cattle drive. He's joining his father and the rest of the cowboys on the trip to Dodge City. His job is to be a wrangler, which means he has to chase after the stray animals. It's hard and dusty work, but it's good practice for being a cowboy one day. So this is Nat, 
He is the son of a cowboy. He is going to work on the cattle drive that is going through the city where Kate lives. Kate scrambled up a ladder to get a jar of her mother's peaches for a customer. Get two more from the storeroom, Jane, she called down to her sister. With so many people in town for the cattle drive, items were selling fast. Kate was trying to be quick and helpful, but it was hard to keep up with everything. Watch out, Kate cried as the jar slipped out of her fingers. Jane caught it. Phew! One stop shopping. It was difficult to find everyday items in the Wild West. People traveling the trails loaded up their wagons, but they couldn't carry very much. Also, things were broken or lost on their trips. So general stores carried everything from food to tools to fabric. In mining towns, stores also carried pickaxes and shovels. Store owners could get rich, setting very high prices for their goods. If something wasn't in stock, people in town had to place special orders to get what they wanted. So this is like the only store in town. It's where you buy everything. Nat and the cowboys were just about in Dodge City when a cloud of dust rose up ahead. Stampede, the trail boss called out. Nat saw a line of wagons driving through the herd of steers. He realized that the animals must have been spooked by the wagon train. The cowboys sprang into action, but one steer got away. Do your job, Wrangler, Nat's father shouted. So Nat went after the loose steer at top speed. Steer is just another name for cattle. Um, the longhorn steers are cattle with big giant horns, longhorns. Life on a cattle trail. There were several jobs on a cattle drive. The trail boss led them and got to choose the path they would take. The cook drove a wagon filled with food and he hunted animals to get meat. Leaders rode in front of the cattle herd, outriders rode on the sides, drag riders rode in the rear, and there was also a wrangler. This was usually a young boy who went after strays. Look, this is a picture of a real cowboy sitting next to his horse watching over the cows. So there's a lot of jobs when you're a cowboy. It's not just like, oh, I'm gonna ride a horse and have a lasso. There's a lot of different things and you have a lot of responsibility. Kate's youngest brother, Billy, moaned and coughed as he leaned against a stack of flower bags. His skin was burning hot. Oh no, Kate thought, he's sick. A salesman was outside shouting about miracle cures. So Kate ran out to buy something for her brother's cough. As she got close, a young cowboy rode in front of her at top speed. She fell backward onto the ground. Surprised, the salesman dropped his bottles and they spilled onto the dusty road. Not so miraculous. Salesmen traveled from town to town offering cures for everything from headaches to stomach aches to other serious illnesses. But these medicines were not usually real. The salesmen often paid someone to pretend to be cured after taking the medicine. So they were liars. This convinced people to buy the medicine. And in the 1900s, newspapers began reporting this. Soon everyone knew better than to buy anything from traveling medicine sales guys. So they would say like, this special potion will cure everything you're sick with. And people were so desperate to cure their family members that they would buy it and it wouldn't really do anything, it was fake. So they're liars. I'm very sorry, Nat said as he got down from his horse. I needed those to help my brother, Kate said angrily. He's sick. Those are fake, Nat explained. You should get a doctor. At Nat's words, the medicine man ran off quickly. Nat helped Kate up. What's the hurry anyway, she asked. One of our steers ran away, said Nat. You should check down by the river, Kate said. Tired animals usually end up there. See all the bottles he dropped and he's running away because he knew he was a liar. The word cowboy comes from the Spanish word vaquero. The first cowboys were Mexican and later other cowboys wore the same ponchos and hats that the Mexicans used. This clothing protected them from the sun, the wind and the rain and the snow as they worked. It was not unusual to see cowboys of different races working together. From 1865 to the late 1880s, about one in three cowboys was Mexican or African American. Look, here's a cowboy on his horse, a real one. So being a cowboy wasn't a job for just one kind of 
person. It was a job for all kinds of men. You could be white, you could be black, you could be Mexican. It didn't matter. The job needed to get done. And a lot of cowboys worked really hard jobs and they all got paid the same, which was good because they had just finished fighting the Civil War and they had ended slavery. So it was good. Kate ran back inside. Her mother was putting a damp cloth on Billy's head. I tried to get medicine, Kate explained, but someone rode through looking for a missing steer. It could be the cattle rustlers, said Kate's mother. This town has so many people now, it's hard to know who you can trust. She told Kate to lock the windows and close the storeroom door. The Law of the West. Dodge City, Kansas was one of the most popular cow towns of the Wild West. It had a reputation for unlawfulness. Most people in Dodge City were more interested in making money than obeying the law. Some of the most famous lawmen and gunfighters spent their time there. That included Doc Holliday and Wyatt Earp. Those are two very famous guys who were bandits and outlaws and they did not follow any rules. As Nat rode toward the river, he passed two Chinese men carrying tools. Excuse me, Nat said, have you seen a longhorn running loose? And the men pointed down the hill. Thanks, Nat called out as he rode. And soon he came across a small pond and nearby in a muddy patch was his missing cow. So here they're making the rails. So railroads made it easier for people to travel to the West. They also led to faster communication and an easier way to bring goods to the West. So the Transcontinental Railroad was started in 1863 and finished in 1869. It connected from east to west with a 1,912 mile route. Two thirds of the workers on the project were Chinese. Other railroads were built later to connect more cities. And one of those was the Santa Fe Railroad through Dodge City. That's where Kate lives. So you can see them working on the railroad here. A lot of Chinese immigrants worked on the Transcontinental Railroad and a lot of them died because the conditions were so extreme. But they got the railroad done and we need to thank our um, Chinese heritage and learn about Chinese heritage and thank all those people who worked on the Chinese Transcontinental Railroad because they really were the heroes of that. From the locked store, Kate watched other children on their way to school. I wish we could go, she said to her younger siblings. I like working in the store, Jane said, and she stacked some fresh jars of peaches. You can go when we're not so busy, their mother said, but just then a customer knocked on the door and Kate let him in. Maybe she would have time to go to school tomorrow. Can you imagine not being allowed to go to school because you have to work at your family's business? Kate wants to learn so badly. And oftentimes we take going to school for granted. We're like, oh no, I don't wanna go to school. I just wanna stay at home and play and hang out. But Kate didn't get to stay home and play and hang out. She had to work in her family's store. And all she wanted to do was go to school like the other kids. Many Wild West towns didn't have a schoolhouse. Children often had other work to do. And in towns that did have schools, the teacher might be as young as 15. Students of all ages learned basic skills like reading, writing, and math, and then they were taught in a one-room schoolhouse. So the school was often just one room with one teacher teaching all of the kids in town. So you could be a first grader in class with a sixth grader and a 12th grader. It was that kind of school. There wasn't that many kids who could go to school because they all had to do their work like Kate. Nat rode up slowly and roped the steer. He pulled it up the hill and outside of town where he rejoined the cowboys. Nat's dad tipped his hat at him and a couple of the other cowboys clapped. Even the trail boss seemed to notice. Nat was thrilled. Finding and roping the steer had been hard work, but he had earned the respect of the other drovers. He could almost see his future as a cowboy. In the Wild West, almost everyone rode horses. Kids as young as two or three rode horses. They were tied in the saddle to learn how to sit. By the time the children were five or six, they would have their own ponies. But the ponies were not just for fun. Kids had to use them to help with their chores. So here is a 12 year old girl and she is uh, on her horse. 
working with the cows. So you didn't get cars like you do now because they didn't have cars to take you places. So everyone had their own horse because that's how people got around. Crazy, I want a horse. Hours later, Billy laid on a straw mattress in the house. He was moaning and he was only getting worse. We should get the doctor, Kate said. Kate's mother shook her head. Doc Fuller went to deliver a baby on Tumbleweed Ranch this morning. That's over five miles away. This means he won't be back anytime soon, Kate replied with a frown. So the Pony Express. So before trains came to the Wild West, long distance communication was difficult. Telephones weren't invented yet, and sending a message by wagon was really slow. So a rider was the best way to get in touch with someone, and a system called the Pony Express operated from April of 1860 through October of 1861. It used riders to send mail from town to town. The Pony Express riders carried mail from California to Missouri in 10 days, switching riders along the route. They didn't have mailmen, they didn't have telephones or the internet, they had to get messages to each other, so the only way they could was from the Pony Express. And riders would carry the mail, or the letters, and the announcements to different towns. At sunset, the steers were being loaded onto a train. Nat rode over to Kate. Thanks for your help, he said. How is your brother? He's not well, Kate said, and Doc Fuller is miles away. I can deliver a message, Nat said. Kate told him where to find the ranch. I'm glad I can really and help and rely from my friends, she said. It's the only way we survive out in the West, Nat replied. Thank you, Kat called out as Nat rode off fast as lightning. As ma more settlers moved west, the open plains became dotted with farms and ranches. Wagon trains and cattle drives wove through the Native American homelands and hunting grounds. Native Americans relied on buffaloes for food and clothing, but cowboys hunted the buffalo until they were almost extinct. This created many conflicts between the cultures. Eventually, Native Americans were pushed off their land almost entirely. The Wild West period ended for good in the early 20th century, but by then, most of the land had been settled. So there's a buffalo. When the settlers started to go west, there were already people there. There had homes there, they had their lives there, and the settlers just came in and pushed them out, which wasn't very fair. Here is the cattle trail map. Between 1867 and the mid 1880s, about 10 million cattle were herded across the United States in cattle drives. And when they reached their destination, the cattle were sold. So these are the routes the cowboys followed. So here's Dodge City. This is where Kate lives. This is Denver, Colorado and Cheyenne, Wyoming. Here's Kansas City and St. Louis, Missouri, all the way down here into Fort Worth, Texas and even in El Paso, Texas. So all of these states are coming toward the western half of the United States and people were making their way across into the crazy wild west. And that is what it would be like if you were a kid in the Wild West. You might not get to go to school. You might have a job starting when you were five or six years old. You had to help out your family. You had to be on your horse doing the chores or working. And oftentimes it wasn't easy. The Wild West might seem like a fun place with cowboys and lassos and lots of cattle and horses, but it really wasn't all that fun. It was a lot of hard work. And it was especially hard for the people who already lived there, the Native Americans and the Mexicans who were already there. And they're like, hello, we already live here. You don't get to come in and take our stuff and move into our homes. But that's exactly what they did. So it's good to learn about what it was like back then for all the people, the people who already lived there and the people who settled there. I really hope you enjoyed today's story. The Wild West is so interesting to me. I love learning about the history of our country and what really made up the things that are in our past. It's so much fun to learn about the past and learn about our history and learn what we can do in the future to make sure we don't repeat our past mistakes. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.